Discover Musk's plans to introduce a powerful new heat shield that is set to be twice as effective as the current tiles, along with incorporating an ablative layer for enhanced protection. Join us as we delve into the future of aerospace technology and how these innovative advancements are set to change the game. Stay tuned for all the details on how this game-changing heat shield technology will propel us further into the cosmos. Two weeks have passed since the fourth Starship launch, but activities at Starbase continue. Relentlessly day and night. Prominent among them is the work on Ship 30 when it's being upgraded with new gen heat tiles, and the construction of the new Starship launch tower. It's here, the new armor of S-30. Oops, I mean the heat shield system with up to 18,000 tiles on S-30. SpaceX has been making radical changes to the system over the past few days, promising. Significant advancements for the upcoming flight. Flight 4 concluded just about two weeks ago, and true to form, preparations for the next. Flight are already underway. Following issues with the heat shield system during the June 6 flight, Elon Musk unveiled. Some groundbreaking changes to the system. For instance, there are plans to introduce a new heat shield that will be twice as powerful as the existing tiles, along with using an ablative layer for additional protection. These upgrades are impressive and remarkably, we won't have to wait long to see them in action. They are slated to be implemented immediately. On the next prototype flight, the S-30. Specifically, on the 11th of June, just five days after Flight 4, the process of removing the heat shield from S-30 began. At this point nearly all 18,000 of its heat tiles have been removed and it now awaits the installation of ablative tiles. This speed is astonishing as we initially thought that removing thousands of heat shield tiles would be a time-consuming obstacle for SpaceX. But what they are doing has dispelled all doubts and worries from fans like us, but the interesting part is yet to come. As SpaceX completed the tile removal, the white ceramic mats underneath the heat shield became increasingly exposed, followed by the removal of these mats to reveal the stainless steel body with many TPS pins. Now it looks like Ship 26. The entire operation was surprisingly quick which means we will likely see the standard silica tiles replaced before long. It will be very interesting to see what those will look like but Ship 30 is hardly the only rocket stage being built there. The heat shield removal process is remarkable that within just a few days, this task appears to have been completed. By around June 14th, which was only about three days after work began, approximately, two-thirds of the heat shields had been removed. In images taken on June 17th, we can see that S-30 no longer has any heat shields. Instead, the stainless steel and attachment pins are now exposed. This rapid pace of work is truly impressive, especially considering that each ship can have up to 18,000 heat shields. It underscores the high expectations SpaceX has for the Flight 5 prototype and demonstrates the efficiency and dedication of their workforce. In addition, we can observe the ablative layer that Elon Musk mentioned. It appears as a white cushion-like layer located directly beneath the tiles. This layer is also segmented into hexagon-like tiles, most prominently visible on the nose cone. The reason for this segmentation likely stems from the nose cone's heat shield being adhered. With glue, unlike the rest of the ship, which uses the pin attachment method. Once the removal process is complete, SpaceX is expected to proceed with adding a full ablative layer to S-30. It remains uncertain whether this layer will be installed throughout the entire ship or only in the most sensitive areas. Personally, I hope SpaceX opts for full coverage across all ships to ensure absolute safety. Following the ablative layer installation, new heat shields will be introduced. I'm particularly curious about the design of these new heat shields touted to be twice as strong. If work proceeds smoothly, I anticipate everything will be completed within two weeks, preparing S-30 for testing early next month. Recently, Elon Musk responded to a tweet about Mechazilla catching Starship by stating they aim to attempt this in late July. With approximately a month remaining until then, preparations need to be swiftly completed, including the replacement of the heat shield on S-30. Adding this coating inadvertently increases the rocket's weight significantly. However, behind this anomaly is a careful calculation regarding reusability. 
Although the ablative heat shields cannot be reused, replacing the burnt tiles still offers an advantage over sacrificing the entire ship due to one tile coming off. This action acts as a defensive barrier, taking safety margins to new heights. The crew appreciates this dual redundancy system that will elevate reliability to another level. Despite increasing the payload weight, it turns the ship into one of the safest vehicles in aerospace history. A trade-off well worth accepting. So these are the current changes to the heat shield and all of this will tie into the modifications for the heat shield on the new Starship V2 variant that SpaceX is producing. Take a closer look at the new rings of Starship V2 and you might not yet notice any significant changes in the installation of the heat shield. However, there's something exciting I want to highlight. At the end of 2023, some unusual rings appeared at the build site. These rings stood out because of the unique pins used to attach the heat shield tiles. The pins were placed closer together, suggesting SpaceX might be using smaller heat shield tiles. This innovation could enhance the ship's durability and make the tiles less prone to damage. Inspecting further, you'll notice a new layout for the heat shield tiles. This layout rotates the entire heat shield by 60 degrees, positioning most hexagonal tiles on their sides rather than their vertices. This adjustment signifies a strategic enhancement in the design, reflecting SpaceX's relentless pursuit of excellence and innovation. Indeed, since these strange rings appeared, we have not seen any tests conducted on the initial versions of Starship. Therefore, in my opinion, this new design is very likely to be applied to the V2 versions of Starship. Even if it might be a durability test, it could appear in practical use unpredictably. Or it might be a combined approach with larger sections of the ship using bigger tiles while more challenging areas like the edges use smaller tiles. Regardless of its intended purpose, this is still a new advancement for Starship. Let's talk about the exciting progress on the second launch tower. Construction of the next orbital launch tower is accelerating rapidly. SpaceX has two final parts, along with the chopsticks and the stand, on their way from Florida. Once these parts arrive, the only component missing will be the quick disconnect arm. There is still one at Roberts Road, where SpaceX manufactures orbital launch pad components. However, this arm might need updating or even be newly built from scratch at the Sanchez site. The teams have made significant strides in preparing the foundation for stacking the tower. The pile cap of the tower is already filled, and SpaceX has begun pouring concrete into it. This process will distribute the tower's enormous weight onto the foundation piles, which SpaceX has driven deep into the ground. The pace and precision of this work reflects SpaceX's commitment to innovation and efficiency, keeping us on the edge of our seats for the next phase of this incredible journey. The crane parts needed for stacking have arrived on site and are already at work. SpaceX is moving faster than initially expected. The first parts of the actual tower, known as the tower legs, are ready to be erected. These leg pieces will form the corners of the tower's lower section, similar to the ones on the existing launch tower one. The tower legs must be incredibly strong as they are near the engines during launch and bear the tower's entire weight. Once the leg section is completed, we'll witness the rapid stacking of the other tower sections. If everything goes as planned, the new tower will still have nine segments, keeping the height the same. Unlike the old launch tower, the new launch tower at Starbase has been upgraded from the foundation stage, promising to create a much more solid structure. First, we gotta thank Benedict 3D for helping us better understand how all these components are assembled for the second launch tower foundation. Support him by following Benedict's X page to keep him motivated to uncover more awesome content like this. It all begins with a drilling of 133 small holes, each 32 meters deep. These holes will be arranged in a symmetrical square pattern. After drilling, concrete will be pumped into them. Immediately after pumping the concrete, the next step is to place the rebar cage. This must be done while the concrete is still in a liquid state and not yet hardened. Then, a thin bonding layer will be poured over the structure to facilitate the subsequent work. At the base of the vertical rebar bars, small concrete blocks will be added to reinforce the piles, preventing them from tilting or bending. 
This is also when the rebar mesh will be placed into the previous structure. According to the image, there are two such layers. One layer of steels on the bottom placed through the vertical steel bars and supported by the concrete blocks at the base of the steel columns. The horizontal steel bars will be added around the previous bundle of steel bars, creating a cohesive and sturdy structure. Once this is completed, the surrounding wall will be fully enclosed. At this point, a component called the embedded portion will be placed on top of the steel frame. This part will be square shaped. These are the points where the tower legs will be placed, stacked, and connected to the underlying structure. Currently, the four corner legs of the tower have begun to be raised and installed. The tower's height will rapidly increase. SpaceX will use a giant crane to stack the segments of the second tower. We won't have to wait much longer for its arrival. These details can be considered innovations and upgrades in the construction of the second launch tower at Starbase. Compared to past projects, it's much more complex, showcasing meticulousness and a focus on ensuring a solid foundation. Moreover, it also signals a more robust and massive upper infrastructure than ever before. If SpaceX's work proceeds quickly and smoothly, the second launch tower could become operational by early 2024. By then, the launch tower will be fully capable of performing its launch and catch missions. Alternatively, it could be used as a dedicated launch tower or a dedicated catch tower as outlined in the environmental impact statement recently released by the FAA. If that happens, perhaps the first Starship launch tower will handle catching duties while the second tower will take on the task of launching all the Starship variants. Why is this the case? We cannot deny that from the outset, this second launch tower has had structural changes in its foundation, which likely allow for changes in both height and durability. Meanwhile, SpaceX is developing a larger variant of Starship such as the V-2 and even the V-3 in the future, which will require a larger launch tower to withstand the thrust power during the liftoff of these massive Starship versions. In contrast, during landing, they will use fewer engines with less thrust to allow the rocket to slow down and hover, which can be managed by the initial Starship launch tower without causing significant damage. The first launch tower at Starbase is set to perform the catch mission in the upcoming flight. Notably, as Elon recently hinted on X, they are aiming to try this in late July. This is definitely an event to look forward to. So how will it happen? To be honest, it's going to differ from what we previously thought. The booster will come back, it will have an impact point that's out to sea, so it will have to steer itself towards the tower with a catch arms, Elon Musk said. Over around three minutes of flight, the booster will separate from the upper stage. In previous missions, it took about four more minutes for the booster to land in the ocean. However, this upcoming flight will have the booster performance extended journey to make its way back to the Starbase launch site. Including other maneuvers, the landing could occur within roughly 10 minutes after liftoff. As Elon Musk explained, the booster will need to autonomously navigate itself towards the launch tower. Two critical factors come into play here, deceleration and steering. These will be managed by two systems, the grid fins and the engines. In reality, both systems performed admirably during the recent flight. There were no reported issues with the grid fins and remained intact when Booster 11 landed. Although one of the center engines failed, it did not impact the landing process. The deceleration from over 1200 down to around 10 km an hour and under 20 seconds was a clear testament to that. However, challenges lie ahead for SpaceX and complex maneuvers like catching the booster with a Mechazilla launch tower's arms. For Flight 5, not only will the grid fins and engines need to replicate their performance from Flight 4, but they'll also need to improve upon it. For instance, while the engines decelerated effectively, many believe the 9 km an hour speed was still too fast for an accurate landing on the catch arms. SpaceX will undoubtedly need to address the engine issue soon. One engine failed shortly after liftoff and another during landing. This could be due to excessive heat and the landing engines repeatedly igniting and shutting down. These factors can easily lead to failures as evidenced by the recent engine issue that 
caused a fire when the booster was near the water's surface. Fortunately, it did not affect the other engines, but the problem needs to be resolved quickly. In summary, having all engines operational is critical for successful steering, deceleration, and a safe landing on the catch arms. Not only do the vehicles need to perform flawlessly, but the launch tower, particularly the chopstick mechanism, must also function perfectly on the upcoming flight. The chopsticks will need to open and close swiftly, precisely coordinating with the boosters. Movements The timing of this action will be measured in seconds, even the slightest delay could lead to a catastrophe. Inside the chopsticks, a crucial system called the thrust vector control will align the boosters. Position, helping it mate precisely with the orbital launch mount or OLM. I and perhaps all of us hope that SpaceX can resolve these issues to ensure a safe landing. Our expectation is that the booster will come back on the correct trajectory towards Starbase. Decelerating and steering reasonably. With the chopsticks below, opening up an ideal space for the boosters to enter, then closing the catch and lower the booster. Subsequently, the thrust vector control will adjust the booster's position, and finally, the chopsticks will rotate and place the booster onto the OLM to complete the mission. However, unexpected incidents could occur in this sequence of events. According to Elon Musk, the probability of success for the upcoming attempt is only 50%. SpaceX is undoubtedly preparing for unforeseen scenarios. Evidence of this is the backup solution Elon Musk recently revealed. If the booster detects that anything's wrong, it'll suicide itself into the ocean. If things are looking good, it'll steer over to the tower and the armor should be able to grab it. If this method is employed, the time frame before the booster approaches the launch tower will be extremely critical and closely monitored. As Elon Musk stated, they'll closely monitor the booster's condition. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.